Okay, so we are recording. So this Thursday night's powwow is going to be a little different. Um, we have a special guest who's absolutely amazing. Her name is Stormy. She's going to tell you more about her story. And I'm really excited because we just had a Zoom earlier this week um, for her team. And now I can't wait to see, like, hear more about what she does for her business uh, as she's pushing to ambassador as well. So I'm going to be taking a lot of notes to Stormy as well. And then guys, use the chat box if you want to ask any questions that aren't asked. Just make sure you put it in the chat box and I'll read through it and make sure I can get some questions in while we have her. Um, could you start by just introducing yourself, letting everyone know who you are, um, things about you and all the good stuff. <laughs> yes. Hi, y'all. Okay. So I'm just going to tell you right now, my kids will probably come in here. I'm like upstairs as far away from them as I can be, but you know, it's only seven here, so they're not asleep. So just, you know, there's two of them. You'll probably meet both of them. Maybe the golden doodle. I'm sorry in advance. Um, I'm like, you just can't hide. If you're a mom, you feel me. <laughs> I'm like, they're just everywhere. Um, but I am Stormy and I'm from Fort Worth, Texas. And I have been in the business for since 2015. So six years, I just hit in March, my six year, um, anniversary. And you guys, when I started, um, I was oh, sorry. I'm like, my eyes are watering. When I started, we only had one baby. Okay. So my six-year-old was six months old and I was coaching full-time. And if any of you guys are educators, like drop a one in the comment because comments, because it's crazy. Public education is tough. And I was working long hours and I was like the PE teacher, you guys, but I coached middle school gymnastics and high school gymnastics. I was the head coach for both of them. So I was showing up every day at Sam and leaving at 6 30 on a normal day okay normal day meaning i didn't have a gymnastics meeting or a house or a youth program and we did all those things year round okay because i had three schools i essentially worked at three schools and so um i was just working full, all the time and it did not bother me and then you have this precious little thing and you're like wait a minute i'm spending more time with other people's kids than i am my own and that hits different okay that hit me differently Never thought I'd want to be a stay-at-home mom. Never thought I'd want to give up coaching gymnastics. And then here she was. Um, and so I went back to work and I would, y'all, I was sad. Like I was crushed. But at the same time, I had like <laughs> a financial freak out. Y'all ever have a moment where you're just like, oh my God. And you just, and then down, you're down a rabbit hole and you can't stop thinking about it. Well, that's what happened to me. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm stressing like about these bows and I want to buy and all these cute outfits. And I don't want to you know, just spend insane amounts of money. I want to be, a, but I, I want to be a yes mom. Like I want to just do it and not have to think about it. And so that is essentially like I always tell I people, I started for two reasons. I started because I had this financial freak out where I wanted to be a yes mom. And I thought, oh my God. I mean, I remember laying in bed so clearly you guys and being like, we have this much in student loans. How long is it going to take us to pay it off? And Jared would tell me that Jared's my husband. And then I would say, oh my God, we're going to pay it off. And then as soon as we get it paid off, we're going to have her loans. And then if there's another one, I mean, we're going to be paying student loans for the rest of our lives. Like, what is this? This is not a way to live. And so I looked at him and I said, if I brought in 500 extra dollars a month, would that help us pay your student loans off faster? And he said, well, yeah. And he made an amortization schedule. My husband's a finance guy. He's a CFO. And so he does this little PowerPoint or not PowerPoint. I always call it PowerPoint. He does his Excel thing. He gets so mad at me. It's like, I don't work on PowerPoint. <laughs> Um, and I, and I was like, that's it. If this girl I'm watching can make $10,000, I can make 500, right? Like that's the, the dream. And I said, but I want you to look at this income chart and I want you to tell me what time, at what point in here I could come home from, from teaching and coaching full-time. And he's, you know, like, I mean, I guess double diamond that would replace your income. Right. And I'm like, yeah. So I get started. I go Ruby in two months. It's fun. It's awesome. Like, you know, I, I got a thousand dollar Ruby bonus. We had Ruby bonuses back then. And then I just was like, okay, now what? Like, that was cool. And y'all literally, I did nothing. All right. I just sat. I never lost Ruby, but I just sat. I just coasted. And in November, I was like, what are you doing? Like, either do it or don't do it. You know, like poop or get off the pot. Like, just make a decision either way. Like, it was enough money at that point that I could have walked away from a couple hundred dollars. Right. Like, I could have walked away from my Like, but I thought, no, you signed up for something bigger. And you guys, I signed my first runner in January, January 16th. She's one of my best friends. I'm like, she's literally pregnant, like any second about to have a baby. And I, and so I'll never forget. And, um, we went from being paid Ruby in January to 
diamond in February and double in March. I didn't even ever, I never even hit Emerald. Like I hit Emerald for like 24 hours. And then, and, and in that time they had the double good bonuses. I'm sure Courtney remembers. So we got $20,000 in diamond bo- and then 30,000 in double bonuses. And it was just insane. Like my whole business just blew up right before my eyes. And I was like, what, what just happened? Like I was, I was Ruby and now these people are looking at me and they think I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. And also I'm double. Do I leave my job now? Like, what do I do? And you guys, I realized I wasn't ready to lose my, or leave my job yet. So I stayed at that job because it was still fulfilling me in a different way until 2019. I didn't leave coaching until 2019. I was a triple diamond because we went triple in 2018. I do want to talk about that a little while later because y'all, I went double in 2016. So yeah, I joined in 15, double in 16. I didn't go triple until 18. So I do want to talk about that because I said it double for a while, you know, maybe at some point, but um, we went triple in 2018 and then we went presidential in uh, April of 2020. So I did have a little bit of a break at some of the higher ranks. So, um, you know, I, I like that because it's part of my story. And so I don't ever like shy away from talking about that. But yeah, so presidential diamond team um, a year ago this month. I absolutely love that. And I feel like everyone's take, I can see everyone's faces because I can tell like your story is similar to so many people on our team, um, whether they're a mom or they're working full time or they hit a promotion that maybe is Ruby for that couple extra hundred dollars, which you started at, but you didn't have that leverage yet to push you further. And you like, were like, oh, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable, but I also could just stop. <laughs> like I also could just stop. Yeah. And that's like a lot of people get stuck there. Well, and the thing too, guys, and and I know that this doesn't speak to everybody. So again, like sometimes, I mean, but I, again, I think everybody's story is different and that's cool is y'all, I could have walked away and I didn't, we didn't need that money. Like when we joined, my husband's like, you know, like we're, we're good. You know that, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I know totally. But like, why not extra money, you know? And so for five years, that money was extra. We saved it until we could pay off his truck. Oh, our washer just broke cash. Oh, the tree in the dev backyard died. Yeah, that really happened. You, God knows how expensive a tree. I did not know that until that happened. Um, you know, and so it was just cash. It was just, yes, to trips and travel and all that stuff. And I mean, we were saving like crazy, but that was the big thing is I definitely could have walked away because at that point it wasn't enough money to make difference, but we were okay financially. Like we were afloat. Like we walked away, we still were paying our bills and our mortgage and our kids were taken care of, you know? But again, and so, so in, tw- in 2019, my husband said, all right, Stormy, we have two kids and you know, we're, this is it. Like we're done. If you want to stay home with these babies, now's the time. And I'm like, you're right. Like I've been working for five years for, or four years at that point for this. And I retired from public education. And now you guys, here's the cool thing is my daughter's a gymnast. She's a level three little, she's six years old. And I get to pick her up from kindergarten and take her gymnastics two, three days a week. And I would never have been able to do that had I not started this back in when she literally was, you know, six months old because her, she starts gymnastics at four o'clock every day. Y'all, my bell didn't even ring until 4.20. But remember, I was there until 6.30, 7.30, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night, every night. So like, I wouldn't have been able and I didn't know this, but she wouldn't have been able to live out her dreams had I not gone after this. Like, it's just, you never, I mean, it's just, it's played out in just such a way that I never, ever, ever saw coming. I have so many goosebumps right now because it's like thinking of the future and like, I want to have kids one day too. And I know there's a lot of moms on the team or people that want to have kids one day. So just thinking about that, like that's a whole nother chapter that you're like, I can be here for because I work so hard to get to this point. Um, yeah. This goes right into that next question that a lot of people have on our team and they want to know about your, your like time management and your day-to-day activities. Now, this looked different for you, I'm sure, when you were working yes. full-time and coaching. Now, now you do this full-time, so you have a lot of flexibility in your schedule and you want to be present for your family, but you also want to accomplish your business tasks every day. So what yeah. does that look like for you? So I'm going to speak to, to, to both of you guys. Like when y'all, when I was working full-time again, like Um, I I worked on my lunch hour, you know, teachers have an off period. So I would usually dedicate my off period to doing like anything I needed to do for work and my lunch hour to doing it works. And then when I got home, my husband was also in grad school. This is the other thing, y'all. He joined grad school in like May of 2015 and he did, was doing a working MBA. So he would go from school or from work to school and I wouldn't see him. And I would like walk in the door at seven o'clock. My nanny would hand me this, our baby, you know, because she didn't go to daycare yet. And and then at 9.30, she'd be asleep and I'd walk out and be like, okay, now it's time to wash bottles and eat and, and work. 
And y'all, and I did, I just stayed up a little bit later every night, which I'm kind of a night out anyway. So, you know, it wasn't a huge deal for me, but that that's what I did. Like I found when I, when I tell people I went diamond working an hour or less a day, I really did because I wrote out everything the night before I used this thing called, um, the, the three list or something. What was it called? I can't remember. It was so old, but basically I started out every day and I just had three, it, it, like everything was three. It was like encouragement, three people to encourage on your team. Check in with three loyal customers, message three new people for loyals, message three new people for distributors, check in with three distributors. I mean, it was three of it. It was so simple. And I sat down every night and filled that out the night before so that when I opened up my phone at lunchtime and I'm pumping, I didn't get stuck scrolling because that is so easy to do, right? So basically what I'm saying is if you have no little, if you have 30 to 60 minutes a day to work this, you have got to be so freaking organized and plan what you're going to do or it won't get done. Like have y'all ever heard that if you plan to fail, you fail to plan or if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. There we go. That, that works better. Yeah, that is so true. And if you, but here's the thing, you guys, I feel like I was probably more, I was better at time management when I had less of it. I know that sounds insane, but, but there was a huge transition for me when I came home and I was like, I have all this time. Also people think, oh, she's home. She's home now. You know, my husband's guilty of this. She can do this. She can do that. She can do that. No, your time is still your time. If this is your full-time job, then you better block off the full-time hours to work it like that. Okay. If you want it to pay you like that. So I, I really did work it like in the 30 minutes when I, you know, on my lunch hour or 45 minutes and then about an hour when I get home and most of that was planning and I use Sundays to plan out content. That's what I did. I would spend a couple hours. I would meal prep. I'd plan content like Sundays are, are still planned days around here. Um, and so that is what I did when I was working full time. There were days that I couldn't work, but there was also days when I was going diamond and double that I was like, I have time to do this. I, I have 12 people to message. So am I going to stop at three? No, I'm not. And I would write down 12 and boom, knock them out. Right. Because they were, it's so easy when you know what you're going to do to pick up your phone and send the messages, drop a one. If you are the person that's like, it's not that I don't have the time. It's just then I open up my phone. And I like, don't know who I'm going to message. And then I start scrolling and then I go to my friends and then I'm like, Oh my gosh, she had a baby. Oh, you know, like that's what happens. That's the dangerous part of working this job. And then you're like, Oh, well, I, you know, I mean, I was on Facebook for 60 minutes. I mean, I worked for an hour today. No, you didn't. You scrolled. There's a difference. Okay. And there, and we've all done it. I do it still. I'm still guilty of it. Sometimes I'm like, that is why Courtney, I told you I got off the bandwagon, the TikTok because I was wasting too much time on TikTok, trying to figure out what kind of video to make. It was a, it was a me problem, not a TikTok problem. Um, so that's how I worked when I worked full time. Now I time block, and I don't know if you guys know what time blocking is. I'm sure y'all do, but the reason I like time blocking is because it allows me to have a different schedule every day if I want to, but I still have set amount of time that I do stuff and I even create to-do lists. So like in my, and I could show you on my planner, but I wake up at five, five thirty every day and I either work out or work my business, start working. So I do one of those two. I do. I, I like to work out first thing in the mornings. And so a lot of times that's what I do. But like if there's not a 5 a.m. boot camp class and I still get up at the same time and I start my day at that same time. So if you're not a morning person, no big deal. If you're night, I'll do it at night. That's perfect. What I do doesn't have to work for you. That's why I like about this business. But um, here's the thing I love about time blocking. Sorry, back to that is. I can stick it wherever I need it to go. Oh, the kids have a dentist appointment at 1230 today. Okay. It all needs to go here. Oh, they have gymnastics at two. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing is you have to be ready to pivot, especially, especially right now in the crazy times that we've been in, because I'm sure, I mean, I'm like, raise your hand. If you get a call on your kids in quarantine or now you're home, you know, your spouse is working from home. Oh, nope. Just kidding. They're going back now. You're, you know what I'm saying? Like things have been crazy the last year. And so what I figured out was that I, it didn't look the same every day because I have two kids in two different schools and daycare called and she's got, you know, now she's home and oh, now the kindergarten and it's like they get dropped off at different times. They get picked up at different times. So the time blocking works the best for me. And I literally write everything down in my planner. I write five to 6 a.m. workout, six to eight mom, like mom mode is what I write, eight to 1030 work. And then I detail out exactly what I'm going to do. 10 30 to 11 lunch like it sounds crazy you guys but I have to be I need structure and I have to tell my time where to go or I will be like oh I need to fold that laundry oh I need to do that dish those dishes because y'all there is more distractions at home than there are when you work full-time like that is what I figured out and so my biggest tip if you are coming home 
to do this full time, or if you are home and you're struggling, the, the biggest thing for me was if I catch myself doing something during the day, I will stop that. It's not work or it's not in my work hours, if you will. Now that's the thing is we're flexible, right? So we do get to choose our day. So like, do I go get my nails done now during the day once every three weeks? Yes, I do. But what I'm saying is if I stop and I'm like, stop it Stormy. would you have taken off from your full-time job to deep clean this closet, right? in this pantry right now? Oh no. Then why are you doing it? You know what I like in that? I mean, uh, that's what I do. I'm like, would you have taken off coaching? to plan this birthday party for your kids? No, you would have done it at night when you had the time. Like, you know, you, you, and so that's kind of where I check myself. Um, that's my like gut punch to myself. If I find myself like, you know, cleaning out tiny socks and like drawing, like doing stuff that I shouldn't be doing during the day, basically. Okay. So going off of that too, like what's something now that you've learned? So I see a lot of people in the comments talking about this. Cause I know people who have gone from a busy schedule to like a flexible schedule and you have to be actually more strict when you're flexible, which you were just saying, like yes. I had to be more strict when I didn't have work to do. Um, so guys, make sure you know that up front. So this kind of goes into that. It's probably something that you would tell your future, your, your past self, but what's any piece of advice you have for someone that just got started pretending you like you talked to yourself years ago, what would something you would have told yourself now that, you know, well, you know, and like I, I started with you guys telling y'all, like I had no idea the ways this business was going to pay me. Okay. Like I had no clue. And um, we always see like these people that we follow then they're posting and they're posting and it's like, oh, they just post on Facebook like once a week. And, you know, now like look at them, they're making like presidential diamond money. We all know that that's not the truth, right? We all know that there's a lot more that goes, goes on behind the scenes. So and this is so cliche, but y'all, it is not a spent. We are a microwave society and this business, if it was easy and it was an overnight success and you could overnight be making five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, everybody would have stayed in. Like, I want you to think about your downlines right now. Maybe if you're new, but like, think about the people that have left because it didn't, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. So you have to trust the process and look around you know, I mean, look around, look at the leaders in the company, look at everybody saying, like tell, telling their stories. I'm telling y'all six years, y'all, it took me, it took me five years to make a five figure paycheck. I mean, I was making really good money really fast, but it took me five years to make that y'all. It was still three times what I made coaching. And I literally could have won the state gymnastics meet every single year, the rest of my career. And they wouldn't have paid me more for it. I wouldn't have gotten any, any, I, I mean, I was busting my butt every day there and I wasn't getting paid more for it. Whereas here we literally get to create our paycheck, but it's not overnight. And you have to be patient and you have to trust the process and you have to do all the things. And you have to understand that it's not always gonna be easy, right? Like nothing we do is easy. It's about choosing your heart, okay? There are hard parts of this business, but is it harder than me having to be away from my family 12 hours a day? No. Is it hard? You know what I'm saying? Like, no. And so choosing your heart, like that, that's the thing. And I know, I don't know if that was like a really clear, concise answer, but trust the process, stay with it. If it didn't work, there wouldn't be a company full of women like me and Courtney, you know what I'm saying? Like to talk to you guys, if it didn't work, it works. It's just not overnight. You know, you don't put it in the microwave and boom, your business pops out as an ambassador diamond. And then how do you get your new distributors started? Like, so you, you basically... I'm sure you tell them that, right? Like, this is the process. It's going to take time. It's going to take some work and effort. Um, but what's like your go-to right now? Okay. So I always ask people to give me a year. Like I really do. I'm like, I need, I used to say six months and I'm like, you know, no, like everybody's story is different. Like y'all, I have a distributor I signed three years ago that just went diamond last month. So, you know, had I just said six months with her, which I mean, I might have, I don't remember. I wish I can remember that far back, but um, I always tell them, that, you know, like basically that give me a year of actually doing this stuff, right? You know, like actually doing the things. And the other thing is I tell them to stay in my back pocket. Like if, if I don't hear from you, I assume you're not working. That's what I tell them. Okay. So I want you, and I know you're going to feel really annoying and it's totally fine. I felt like that with my enroller too. blow my phone up all the time. Again, if you're not messaging me, you don't know everything. So I know you're not working if you don't have questions. Okay. Like that. And that's what I tell people. Um, but here's what the other thing I'm going to tell you guys is, and I think this is very important. Do not get hung up on training. Okay. 
do not there are a hundred different ways out there to do it there are i have you know three to four different boards alone you know with training i have um you know units on my team page i have um the diamond call the girl that taught us to do the you know the um oh my gosh you know what i'm talking about the google doc i have that i've done it all nothing is foolproof nothing well, nothing, there's no magic sauce. The magic sauce is in the person doing what you're giving them. So don't get hung up on having the perfect training with the perfect post, with the perfect things. It won't, it doesn't matter. You could have the perfect thing and they still won't do it, right? There's just some people that are not willing to put in that work. And that's not on you. That's not on your leadership. That's not on your training. That's not on your messages. That's not on your posts. It's not on them or you at all. It's on them, okay? So do not get caught up and, and my training is not good enough. It's this, it's that, it's not, it's not. Okay. Um, that's, and I think that's important to remember you guys. And I mean, I've been in six years now. And so I, I've seen a lot of it. Um, and it, it, it kind of just goes back to the analogy and y'all, I'm sorry, like I work out a lot and I'm a coach. So I use a lot of like fitness analogies and like working out analogies, but it's like, you can give people the uniform and te- you know, you can put them on the team. You can tie their shoes for them. You can give them water. You can do all the things, but you can't make them play. You cannot make them play. Oh my gosh. I never heard that analogy before. And I love it. <laughs> I'm like, yes. You can, I'm like, everybody's probably like, oh my God, not again. What is it the lead a, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't yeah. force someone to work this business, but you can inspire them. And I love that. Like you give someone a, you say to give them a year, like, Hey, you're coming in that you're going to be new. It's going to be a learning process. There's not going to be any perfect thing to help you like launch your business. But if you give me a year and work with me, show up to these zooms, like just plug in, you will be successful. Yeah. And I always tell them like, these are staff meetings, right? Like, do you just respond to emails and be like, no, I'm good. Like, no, you know what I'm saying? And like, there's a lot more that goes into it, but yeah, like if you can keep them plugged in, that's huge, you know, and uh, not everybody, you've got walkers, you've got joggers, you've got sprinters, just, that's the other thing. I love that Amy Spence said, I, I listened to this training the other day and she was like, how much in a perfect world, how much would you be making in three months? That's a great question because now I know how to give you, because if you tell me, $10,000, I'm going to say, listen, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing a lot more than one 45 minutes to six, you know, 45 to 60 minutes a day. So that's another thing. How, you know, how, how much time can you put into this? I ask a lot of these questions before I sign them though, you guys, because here's the deal is we get to pick our distributors. Like we get to pick our team. You know, you're allowed to interview them a little bit. That's what I say anyways. Well, yeah, because if they're filling out like an influencer application or coming to you about the job, they think it's a job already anyway. So you can, you can ask the questions to see if they're a good fit or like where, where they're going to be on your chart too, honestly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, so that's new distributor. And I think the coach analogy is perfect. And Mark actually made a status today that was talking about that too. And it like all ties together perfectly. But the other side of it is being from your coach background too, you need to be a leader, right? And like, you need to develop leaders underneath of you as well. Sorry, my internet's going out. Um, you need to develop those leaders under you as well. So I know I had a couple diamonds and above that wanted to come and ask you a quick question, um, just about leadership, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Yami, do you want to go first? Heck yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. What's a great system that has helped you develop layered leadership within your team? Um, okay. So The thing is, what I do is that I have, um, I have, I will say this, y'all, I have been very blessed to always have great leaders. I don't know, um, you know, I I don't ever want to take credit for it. Like, I don't know. I just always had great leaders. Um, So what I do is I always introduce them to the, to the, uh, the top of that leg, right? If I place them under that leg, like the top of that leg, the triple of that leg, the double of that leg, you know, I guess that's really, I don't have any legs that are smaller than that at this point, but um. I introduce them to them and then I introduce them to their direct upline. So like if I place them on a Ruby upline, but you know, it's several levels down. So they have two other contacts with me. Now, if I PE them, they're my responsibility, right? Like they are, I am training them. I am. Um, but that way they have like somebody that it's like, oh, like I go to bed early. I get up at 430. I go to, or 445 for 5. I get, I go to bed early, you know? So like, I, then they have another person that they feel comfortable going to the answering or asking questions for because they don't always feel comfortable in those chats, right? Like we want them to, we, with the newbie groups, we want them to work so badly, but they're just not for everybody. They really just aren't. So I feel like that direct connection is always better for us. 
And so I just introduced them right off the bat. Like here, here is your, um, you know, your number one and your number two go-to. Like this is Christina, this is Brittany. Um, they can answer anything. Please go follow them on Facebook. They have, you know what I'm saying? Like, and just kind of go ahead and like right off the bat, they are looking at them too, not just me. And you know, to be honest, it takes some of the pressure off you, right? Like, because here's the deal is we don't want to feel tied to our phone all the time. And in a boom season where you have a ton of newbies or like a codes going on, it can be really, really overwhelming, right? Like, and, and especially if you have a bunch of newbie signing newbies and you're like, oh my God, there's like 80 distributors that need to be trained now. Like that, you know, we, you want to be able to give yourself some of the freedom you signed up for. That's how I, I think about it. I don't know if that was a, like, did that answer your question? Yummy. <laughs> Okay. You said yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. And actually, the other day on your team Zoom, someone like private messaged me in the chat and said, "How do you keep up with everything? <laughs> like, how do you keep up?" And honestly, I'm. I said this to new distributors before and to leaders. Like, you you can't stress yourself out about it. You have to give yourself grace, right? Like, you have to be able to be like, like you just said. I love that. We didn't start this to be on our phone all the time. <laughs> we start this because we want to have a life and live it. And you guys, that starts empowering your leaders when you're, when you're like, Hey, this, this is Brittany. She's another one of your leaders. Like, they're like, I am a leader. I am. I'm a leader, you know? And then you're like, also like we do newbie trainings once a month or once a week, all month long. We have like a system. Do you know how many I do? I do one because all my leaders do one. Okay. Because we didn't sign up to be on a zoom every single night of our lives. Like y'all, I, we, again, we signed up to have more freedom. And so when you start, you have to, and it's hard. I am a control freak to the core. Like it is hard to, to let go and do it, but it's also really hard to do it yourself, you know? And if you want to have those leaders, you have to start letting them lead. Like I'll, I'll have Zooms where I like let, you know, my new, um, newly promoted people, like we call it our fire Zoom and whoever promotes the next. <laughs> and they, sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I need, how do I make them stop? You know, like, but they need that. I did it. I'm sure I did it when I was a brand new Ruby and Diamond too. I was word vomiting all over, you know, but they need that. They have to do that. Like that's the only way they're going to figure out leadership is to let them lead. I love that. I love fire zoom. I feel like we should do that guys. Definitely. Yeah. It's fun, but it can go <laughs> wrong sometimes. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh my gosh. Okay. They're going to, they're going to be done soon. Nope. Let's get, let's grab a glass of wine. But every <laughs> time I'm like three minutes, three minutes. And I'm like, Oh, I love that. And I love like how you said, like you have your, your other leaders on your team do the new distributor trainings too, which is something, I mean, when I first started this business, I was hosting every power hour, like every power hour. I was like, Oh my gosh. Like that yeah. was stressing me out. Just hearing you say that on a Monday night. Yeah. So when did you realize that? Like, did you do that right away? Did, was it your leader came in and told you like not to overwhelm yourself with all the stuff that you're going to be doing as a leader, or did you just figure it out as you went? I had to figure it out, you know, because I was like so stressed out. And also here's the other thing is we all lead differently and I lead differently than every single leader I have. Like I am very different than I'm a Brown y'all. Like I literally, I don't, <laughs> I'm like, when I started, I was like, I'm a red and now I'm like, yeah, I'm a green. And then I'm like, I'm just like a messy Brown y'all. Like I am all the colors, like they're I'm just a big blob of Brown. And so they're all very, very red, like insanely. Like I'm like, pull back. You're offending people, Fred, like, you know, calm, let's take it down a notch. And so what I figured out is like, they did, they all would be like, well, no, we needed this. We needed this. We needed, you know, and there was a bunch of, and I'm like, all right, well then let's all take it. And you, you know, you do it your way. I'm going to do this my way. You do, and that, that was kind of, I think eye opening for me. That was kind of me being like, all right, they don't always love what I'm doing. I'm not going to love what they're doing, but that's okay. Like, that's okay. Because there's different people on our team. That's going to relate to other people. But I think I just looked up and I was like doing what you were doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, I'm the only one posting on the team page. I'm the only scheduling things out. I'm the only one running contests. I'm the only one on power or leading power. So I'm the only one, you know, and I was like, no, no more. This is not what I signed up for to leave a full-time job and have less time, especially in the evenings, y'all, because that's precious time with your kids when they're in school, you know, like, so four to eight for me, like is mom time, not not what all I was doing time. I'll tell you, you know, so I yeah. think I had to figure it out. I just had to figure it out on my own by doing. Yeah. And I feel like control is also fear-based. So 
like once you realize that you're what, what you're actually afraid of and you work on that like one of your limiting beliefs then you can release and have more faith instead of fear yeah no you're right um and sarah you want to come ask a question yeah um I was just going to ask, like, when, when you're promoting, like, when you're working on a promotion, where do you focus your energy towards the most? Like, are you focusing more on training your team, or are you working more on personally enrolling customers yourself or distributors, or what, what does that look like for you? So I would say probably enrolling on a promotion month, right? Um, you know, because, I mean, y'all, I... I needed one distributor to go press. Okay. Last year I needed one to box. And I like on the, I don't know, maybe the 14th or 15th. I don't know if y'all know Ashley Sinclair. She's, she's not who signed me, but she's my ambassador upline. So I called her. I was like, I need to talk. I still am one distributor short. And I'm like shouting out present. I'm still one distributor short, you know? And I'm like freaking out because all I've been talking, thinking is customers and volume, customers and volume, customers and volume. And she was like, Stormy, have you tried to enroll that distributor? And I was like, I mean, eh, eh, kind of, I'm more worried about like the hundred K thing, you know? And she's like, you can do it. Go enroll a distributor and fill that box. Like when you're ready, you're going to do it. I had a distributor in the computer by that night. And by the week she was filled to 400. She's never worked a day in her life, but that was, so I'm like, mm. but, but so to, to sell you that is like, yeah. And then once I moved, I, I moved on, I moved away from enrolling distributors that month because again, we needed a ton of volume. And so usually again, because I have great leaders, they take care of their stuff. So like I'm working, like I'm, I'm, I feel like anytime we promote it, I'm always working with that newest leg, you know, like that weaker, that weakest leg that may not have that developed leader. Like I have a girl who's now a double and I feel like, Oh, whew, this leg has a developed leader, like move on, let's build another one. You know what I'm saying? And so, but I'm always working with that weaker leg and that's where all my volume and my enrollments are going. Um, the other thing you guys is when you're promoting instead of, I would say, instead of putting it into like um, training, like putting it into the people that are there, you know, like being their biggest fan, like being their hype girl, checking in, where are you at? Um, how are you doing? How are you feeling today? Do you need anything? Hey, you're kicking butt. You know what I'm saying? Like the people that are right there promoting right next to you, that's where I'm enrolling my, or, or putting my energy is with them and making sure they feel good. And like, you know, they're, they have somebody to come to because we all have that minute where it freaks out like that. I think I had two of those calls with Ashley that month that we went press, but um, that's where I put my energy, you know, I think is definitely just enrolling and then being your team's hype girl. Good, Sarah. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, are you unmuted? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so then I have a follow-up question for that because I don't like them. Hold on one second. Let me, Jasmine. Jasmine just wants to come say hi. She's going diamond this month. Mm. <laughs> Let me unmute her. Uh, yeah, so, okay, you said, you've said since the beginning that you like have great leaders, like leaders that you just know they're working, getting their promotions. How did you establish that? Like, how did you, was it part of the release of the control? Um, I think so. I think part of it is lucky. You know what I'm saying? I really do think part of it is lucky, um, that I've, cause I've had leaders walk away, you know, I like also I've had a lot of leaders walk away, but I mean, my main leaders have been with me for so long, like for, you know, I mean, now I have newer ones, but I really, I don't know other than the fact that when I, again, because you get to pick your distributors, pick people who are like you, you know, if you are the distributor you want, find those people. Um, the other thing I think is um, something that I do think has been a, a huge, and I, I'm like, I'm trying to pick and choose how I say this because I've seen it with other people is something that has, um, I have not handheld them too much from the beginning. Does that make sense? Because here's what happens when you have a newbie who you are doing everything for or a, a distributor and you're hand holding them and you're dragging them along and your load is just getting heavier and heavier because you're you become bitter and you become frustrated and your business isn't fun and so I am there to give them tools and I am there to give them love and like all that things but I do not ever I, I, I don't I just haven't built a lot of people you guys I haven't like you know what I'm saying like my husband's been passed like three times now. I think he's not even in the computer. And I'm like, woohoo! Like every time it happens, I'm like, yay, go Jen or go Lee. You know, like whoever it is, I'm like, this is great. This is perfect. 
But I think that has been a big thing for me is like, I can look back on those leaders and they did it themselves. I was right next to them every step of the way, but they did it themselves. Did I place under them? Of course, but not like, we're not talking, they were sitting back just collecting a check, you know? And I think, I really think that's huge, you know, and that's credit on them, not on me, like that to their credit, they were willing to go to work, but I wasn't willing to give it to them. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I think again, a lot of it's been luck too. Like I have great, great girls. And I love that, that, well, you're always going to be the hardest working distributor on your team. So I guess like, even if you're a brand new person watching this right now, or you're an established leader building a team, you're always going to be that hardest worker. And like you said, it's, it's nice when you're working for your own promotion and not just giving someone else theirs. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. always, it's always nicer. And that's like, I love that too. Cause I would love, like, I'm like suppressed Brett, like everyone, if you want, you want to right now, she said three times, I'm calling everyone underneath Brett right now <laughs> to surpass him three times. That would be awesome. Yeah. Like Jared's like, if I get a check anymore, I'm like, no, you haven't gotten a check in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. It's so true. But yeah. So if, even if you're brand new guys, you don't have a team yet just when you start to build a team, remember you're always going to be that hardest worker and they're going to mimic you and they're going to follow what you do. And they're literally like everything, like they need to see you showing up to these Zooms, you showing up to working sessions, you enrolling and sending a screenshot of how you do it so they can do it as well. I love that enabling them. Um, and then our last question is Brianna. Hey everybody. So I just, um, Stormy, I just want to thank you for making time for our team tonight. I think it's really important for us to kind of get refreshed by other leaders that are within our company. So um, the, one of the questions I wanted to ask was just from in my personal experience, when you have different distributors that I guess, I hate using the word discouraged, but when you have different leaders on your team that kind of get caught up on what maybe has been placed under them, uh, you know, obviously because we can move distributors to other leaders. Mm -hmm. And maybe that those people are not working under them, but they're trying to like encourage those people to work. Like what, how do you just tell that person to, or how do you encourage that person to just keep going after what we're being paid for, which is enrolling people and enrolling teammates? I don't know if that question makes sense. No, it does. So basically like they're discouraged because people under them aren't working. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm whether they enroll them or not. Um, yeah, I have a girl, I, I love her. I want to leave her. She gets so caught up on this. And you know, what I told her the other day was, I was like, and here y'all again, I'm sorry, but the fitness and the workout. Um, but, um, I have a girl that's a very close friend of mine that we started counting macros together and we started work. I already worked out, but she's been working out with me, you guys. And there's, I, when I see her, I'm like, Hey, how's your macro counting going? She's like, Oh, it's not, you know what I'm saying? And like, and sometimes she doesn't want to go to camp gladiator with me. You know what? And do I stay at home in bed because of that? No. Have I thrown my macro scale out and been like, all right, I'm back. Let's just go get me a box of crumble cookies. No, because I have my own goals, you know? And so I'm not focused on what she's doing because I'm so focused on what I'm doing. And so that's what I tell them. Like, here's the deal is you didn't join this business for them or for anybody else. You joined it for you and you can control your paycheck. Okay. Um, and I know a lot of times people get hung up. Well, they're getting paid if I, you know, they're, not, they're not getting paid that much. Okay, like move on. Their $30 because they're a 400 box is not your, they don't even probably know how to get the $30, first of all. Okay, if they're not working, I'm like, they don't know. But, um, and basically just reminding yourself that you signed up for you and you show, or you show up every day for you. And here's the other thing. I love this analogy and you might've heard it, but um, I heard it from Ashley. So the other thing I tell people is you got to think of distributor and I did not come up with it. Um, and like signing distributors is like a deck of cards. Okay. You have four aces in that card or in that deck, you have four Kings, you have four Queens, you have four, you have four twos, you have four fives, you know, you have all the things. And every time you're signing, you're flipping a card. Okay. You don't know it. You're going to hit some twos, right? But if you keep flipping, you're also going to find your Jacks, your Kings, your Queens, you're going to find your aces. My enroller was like, you were like a five or a six when you signed up. And now you like, look at you turned into like an ace. And I'm like, thank you. But you know what I'm saying? And you, that's the other thing is you never know. Maybe you flip a three, but then all of a sudden they come out hot and they're a queen. So that's why you, you never give up on people. You don't have to drag them. But so if you want to find people like you, if you want to find your runners, you keep signing. Okay. But getting in your feels about it because so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so aren't working that's not going to do anything for your business. Like you're now you're just them not working. Uh, sad about it, you know? So just keep flipping the deck of cards. I'm 
I'm like, is that, I don't, I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, do I, should I unmute? Like, what's, okay. Yeah, I, I really, that answered my question because I think that even just when I kind of come back to when I first started and, you know, we, we bring our limiting beliefs into this business, right? Like we get, when we get started, we kind of, you know, have the things that are, our objections, you know, as to why we don't get started. And then when we get started, we kind of carry that along with us. And I think that once, you know, once we're not enrolling, we kind of get lost and, you know, should I keep going? What should I do? Should I reach out to my team? So everything that you said made sense. And I hope that encourages someone else out there tonight to just keep going regardless. Yeah. And, and y'all, this business is seasons, just like anything else, you know, like it's seasons, like Walmart has down seasons, Amazon has down seasons, you know, every, they also have boom seasons, you know, every single business, like my, my husband and his friend are playing around with the business and, you know, like, like starting, like legit starting business. And I'm like, well, these would be your off months, you know, so we would need to get creative on those months. And so like, when it gets slow, like I have girls that are like, oh my God, it's just like, I'm in such a funk. I haven't enrolled anybody in two weeks. I'm like, that's not a funk, slow down. You know, you've been in three months, not a funk. It's just a season. There's planting seasons and there's sowing seasons, right? And like sometimes you're like, man, I can not find somebody today. And sometimes you're like, I'm pretty sure I could text this person and be like, hey, if you don't buy my cleanse, like my life, you know, like, like it's my life depends on it. And they're like, no, I'm good. You know, like we've all had both of those times or I have in six years. <laughs> no, and I mean, right now, if you're looking at if you're looking at those finding those people on your team that aren't working and you're focusing on that it's just going to cause more of that in your mind and just like brianna just said and and you just said it's going to make you focusing on the wrong thing and then you're not going to be enrolling yourself so that's a good wake-up call it's the 22nd of april right like how's your month been right like how many people have you enrolled customers distributors and then think about what we have eight days left of the month so use the advice stormy just gave you tonight guys and just okay, I'm going to be the best distributor on my team. I'm going to be showing up and staying consistent, right? Staying focused. I'm sure that that was a huge, huge thing for you. Um, how you plan out your time and when you're going to be working your business and then pouring in, pouring love in to the people on your team and being their hype girl and encouraging them as they're hitting that next level because they're going to be bringing in, right? If they're enrolling and they're working, they're going to be bringing in tons of new people um, to your organization. So you want to help them as they're developing into the leader that you are today. Love that so much. Um, thank you so, so much. I think that was exactly at the 45 minute mark. It was. And if anyone has questions for Stormy, like just send them to me later. I can always shoot her a message and follow her on social media as well as she's pushing for ambassador. And thank you so much for being here tonight. Yeah, thank y'all for having me. Good luck. And I can't wait to see you guys go ambassador. Oh yeah. Thank you. <laughs>